Hi guys, Drea from Aloha Plant Life here. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about humidifiers and really just about kind of humidity in general. It is um, kind of becoming full real winter where I am in North Texas. And this coming week, it is actually going to get this Friday down to a low of 12. That's pretty low for here, unless you count last year when we had our apocalyptic winter storm in which we lost power because some of these plants I have now would not have survived that. Luckily, all the ones I had then did and all the plants I had back then were okay with low humidity. So when we got down, I'm sure it was probably like, it might've been lower than 20% humidity in, in this house during that storm last year. So luckily those plants were all good with that. But some, some, I say some, no. A lot of my plants now are not okay with that level of humidity. And I'm sure a lot of your plants aren't. Humidifiers are gonna be your best bet to increase humidity in your house, but they don't come without their cons, all right? So I'm gonna go over the pros and cons, and I'm gonna be brutally honest with you guys about how I feel about humidifiers and particular humidifiers. I do want to preface this, big preface here. This is not a sponsored video. Nobody who makes these humidifiers sent me these humidifiers. I paid and bought these humidifiers myself. So these are straight up on my honest opinions and reviews. I'm not associated with any of these companies in any way, any form or fashion. And I would love for you guys to give me your feedback as well if you have some of these humidifiers, especially this one, because this is a very popular one that gets featured in a lot of plant videos. And I'm gonna be straight up honest with you, I'm not biggest fan of this one. And I know a lot of you who have it are probably going to be like, what? But I'm going to tell you exactly why. So let's go ahead and get into them, why don't we? So starting out, let's start with our smallest humidifiers. So I have these two little humidifiers here. These are both made by a uh, smart double, I believe. This one definitely is. I'm pretty sure this one is too. So these are little what are called tabletop humidifiers, obviously, because they're tiny and they fit well on tabletops. And they're really good for just kind of a small space. So for example, I have this one sitting in the windowsill in the east facing window in my bedroom because that is where I have a little grouping of plants that are pretty much all Calathea. And Calathea want a lot of humidity. So it's kind of nice, they're all in a tiered planter. And then I do have a few other plants that are not Calathea in the windowsill directly. And a couple of them are um, plants that prefer high humidity. So I set this in the middle of the windowsill and it puffs out mist all over those plants and in that general area, but it's not gonna go much beyond that area, but it works really well for them. I haven't really had a lot of crisping edges on those plants, even though it's been colder and the humidity has been lower. So it does work really well. I will say one of the downsides of this is gonna be that you're gonna to have to fill it every day, maybe even twice a day. The other thing is, is there, it's like a regular big humidifier, it's corded. Let me show you. I can figure out which cord it is now. So it comes with a USB cord that plugs in to the back side of this humidifier, if you can see it here. So you just plug that in there. This may lead you to believe that this is a rechargeable humidifier. It is not. Do not be fooled if you see it online. Now the other downside of this is it comes with this cord. It does not come with the adapter. This is like a ghetto old Apple, I think, adapter, iPhone, something. Um, really old, but hey, it still serves its purpose and it was what I had on hand. So you just plug that in the wall to get this thing to run. Luckily, I have an outlet right next to that window in the bedroom. So it's not really like an eyesore because this is hidden behind the top plant in the planter in the bedroom and then the core is kind of hidden behind the planter as well. So this really easily, I say really easily and then I struggle to get it undone. It just screws off. You just fill the water in there. It has a max fill line. Inside of this little tube here, this just twists off. And this is where the filter is. It's just a little like cotton-like filter. The replacements are pretty cheap online. You just replace it, you put it back in there. A good indicator with these that you need to replace them is the mist level won't be as high. It won't be misting as much. Um, but basically the way this works is there's two little prongs here. They're in there and they create the mist. And then there's a little, what do you call this, diffuser? Little metal thing that uh, is gonna diffuse the mist into the air to create that humidity. This one, once again, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see this very well, but we'll see what we can do here. The lighting might not let you see it. Sure, oh yeah, there you go. You see how it looks kind of gunky? Doesn't look totally smooth and shiny. 
That's because it has some scale buildup on it because I haven't cleaned it yet this week. So that's another thing with humidifiers, you're gonna have to clean them once a week. Um, with this one, I just get a little white vinegar and a Q-tip, I dip it in the white vinegar and then I just twirl it around in there until all that scale comes off. And then whenever I replace the filter or if I notice that it's not uh, misting well, I will also clean the underside of that is in the middle there, same thing, you don't want it to get it all scaled up. So usually you only have to do that about once a week, but if you see it's getting gunked up, do it when it's gunked up, it's gonna be easier to get it off the sooner you do it versus if you wait forever. So then once you fill this with water, you're just, you know, spraying it back on. Like I said, it plugs into the wall and then it has several settings. I am going to fill this up actually real quickly so that I can show you kind of what it looks like. So give me one second. So it's gonna have to be over here because it's stretching it a bit. So when you press this on for the first time, I say, when you press this on for the first time, work with me. I don't know what the heck just happened there, you guys. It just wanted to um, be rude and mean. So if you can see there, there we go. You see the mist, the mist is shooting out. Um, this cord is really short for this, but that's okay, we'll make it work. Um, so another thing to be mindful of, if you tilt things too far, they will leak. So you wanna keep them upright. I'm just tilting this so you can see. This is the first setting, the mist is coming out constantly. I don't really use this setting very often. Um, I don't, I think it's a little bit overkill and it is gonna make you have to fill it faster. If you press the button again, it'll do intermittent mist. So you'll see it'll go with one shoot and it will stop for a second and then it'll go again. Another interesting feature about this, and it may be too bright in here for you to see this, but if I do a hold down for a long time on here, a light will come on. So this can serve as a night light as well, which is kind of fun. And then if you want to do some meditating or whatnot, I really like this breathing light fe feature. So if I hold this down again, it will start to fade in and out on that light. And then if I hold it down again, it'll turn it completely off. So it's kind of a fun little device. One of the things that I really don't like about humidifiers though, is that you do run the risk of damage. So that's one of the things that a lot of people don't really talk about. So this just runs unless I turn it off. There's no automatic setting. So in the winter, no big deal really, because like I said, the humidity is pretty low. So I'm not gonna run the risk of it being too much hum humidity. But in the summer, if you're using this and it's already humid in your house, it's gonna create a puddle of water, a condensation around it because it's too much humidity. And that can ruin your furniture, it could ruin my windowsill. A way around that obviously is to put it on a tray that you don't care about or a waterproof tray or put like a towel under it or whatnot. But it is always a risk that you're running with, or risking with humidifiers when you use them is that you're gonna have some kind of water damage at some point. The other thing that I don't like is that white dust. I hardly ever hear anybody talk about the white dust. Water has minerals and everything in it. We talk about it when we water our plants and you know, if we're talking about, do we use tap water? Do we use distilled water? What do we use? I will say this humidifier actually specifies to use tap water with it. I actually use filtered water from my fridge. I do find that it helps reduce how quickly that scale builds up on the metal part, but it's still, even with filtered water, I get the white dust on things. So that's kind of a nuisance as well. It kind of just makes your house look dusty, but it's just from like the mineral builds up buildups and everything that's being released from the water. I have been told that you can get around that by using distilled water. I however have not tried it myself, so I will not attest to that being a fact. If anybody has tried it and knows that it's a fact, um, and especially if you've tried it with one of these humidifiers, that would be great so that we know for sure that it's true for these humidifiers, leave a comment below and let us know. So that's one of the downsides. There is the leaking and the white dust. And one of the downsides of these, as I just mentioned, is it just runs until I turn it off or until it runs out of water. So it does automatically shut off when it runs out of water, but it still is a really great option for just a small grouping of plants or a tabletop situation. Now, this other one is uh, works exactly the same, same components, except that it doesn't screw off, it just pulls off, but it's made the same way, same filtration system. You fill this to the max line. And this one, however, is rechargeable. And it also comes with this cute little convenient carrying handle that really I never use. Um, so the nice thing about this one is it's rechargeable. So I actually have two of these because the battery, here's another con, does not last that long. I think six to eight hours is about all I get out of a battery. And so I have two of these. I keep one plugged in at all times. And the only reason I got this is because I have a ledge over my bathtub 
that is very wide. It's where I keep all of my Marantas. They absolutely love humidity. They love my frosted giant east facing window that's right there in that ledge above my tub. But because that ledge is above my tub, there is not an outlet nearby. So my only option for a humidifier was to have a small one like this that is rechargeable. So it comes um, very similar to this one. It comes with a cord, a USB cord, but it does not come with your adapter. So you'll need an adapter and it plugs in the same way. And this one functions exactly the same, you guys. So I'm not gonna run it because you're already seeing over here what it's doing. The only difference is this one doesn't have the light feature, but it does the intermittent, either the full mist or the intermittent mist like this one's doing right now, which I'm gonna turn this off so I'm not just wasting water over here. And the button works like exactly the same. Press it once for full mist, twice for intermittent, and then again for off. Um, so this is convenient if you do have a place that uh, you can't plug in and let it run, like this one that has to be plugged in. This one you can just charge and then put it over there, but I would recommend if you're needing to run humidity pretty nonstop to get two so that you can always have one charging at the ready for when the other one dies. So that's that one. So these are just little solutions, like I said, for little groupings of plants in small spaces. This is not gonna do much for if you have a room full of plants, such as my living room, and if you have a big room, such as my living room, and a very open floor plan house, such as my house, it's not gonna do much. So let's go ahead and set these to the side. All right, you guys, let's talk about these big humidifiers now. And if I mispronounce the um, brand names on either of these, my apologies. I'm just gonna say it how I think it's supposed to be said. So let's start with this one. This is the one that I see most often recommended. This is the Lavoit LV600HH. This is a full room humidifier or so they claim, and I will get into that here in a second. It claims to cover up to 753 square feet. That's a very large room. It does come uh, with three different mist levels, and this one does do warm or cool mist. This is the only one I have that does, ha does have that warm mist option, and it also uh, has a diffuser option. Both of these actually will have a diffuser option where you can put in essential oils if you want to. I'm using them for my plants. I don't think my plants need essential oils, so I have not used that feature yet. It is an auto shut off. All of the humidifiers that I'm discussing today are auto shut offs. When they run out of water, they turn off. That's all that means. This does have a 1.58 gallon capacity, so you're not going to have to theoretically be filling this as often as those little ones that I showed you to begin with, but also you're going to have to be putting a lot more water in it when you do fill it. One of the reasons, so, it, so I will say it does claim that it runs a total of 50 hours, but I will get into what my experience has been with that here in a second. One of the reasons that I did like this one was that it had an auto setting where you can easily set the humid humidity level that you want and it will run until it hits that humidity level. And then it will shut off once that humidity level drops below what you want it at, it will turn back on again. So I liked that feature. That also theoretically should help you avoid what I talked about earlier about um, if it's too humid in your house and you're running a humidifier ending up with condensation all over the floor. However, I have still had this one produce condensation all over the floor before. I do still have the same white dust problem with this one. This one does specify to use um, distilled or filtered water. I think it actually might even say distilled primarily, but I'm sorry, I don't have distilled and I'm not gonna go buy a ton of distilled um, and I have read plenty of people using this one with filtered water, but you are not going to want to use tap water with this one. And even if you use uh, distilled water, when you read the manual for this one, it's gonna tell you you're gonna get that same scale buildup that you saw on the top of those little ones. Only the problem is you're gonna get that scale buildup in a lot more places in this one and in this one, more so in this one than you are in those little ones. Let's see, what else? So another thing that I thought was a little bit weird with this one was that it claimed on the site that it was filterless it's not filterless. And I will show you that here in a second. Size wise, this is a, approximately, if I'm rounding, 11 by eight by 11. So it's not taking up a ton of space. All of these also have like sleep settings where it's supposed to like, you can turn the display off so there's not light bugging you. Um, they all claim to be ultra quiet. I guess it depends on your definition of ultra quiet. I'm a really light sleeper. So for me, like any little thing will usually wake me up. It's not making, it's not gonna make like a loud, loud humming noise. I will plug it in for you guys here in a second so you can see um, what I'm talking about. And actually, let, let me go ahead and do that. Let me plug it in so I can show you some of the settings on there. Okay, so it's plugged in. It should start putting out mist. Nope, 
I forgot. After I, after you've unplugged it, this one you do have to turn back on. It doesn't come back on on its own. So now you can see the mist coming out here. So on here, it does have the three mist level settings. Right now, it auto sets to two when you turn it on. So this is what two looks like. We get lots of mist over here. Ooh, my cat actually likes to get up here and sit on this and put his face in the mist. Apparently, he needs high humidity too, just like the plants. Um, so we can turn this to three and it's going to get even crazier, misty. Hopefully me putting my face over here shows you how misty it is. I'm going to set it to one. So you can see here, this is this level one setting. It's nowhere near as high, right? So that's what I usually leave it at. You can see here it says 40% humidity. I think that's supposed to be what it is in here, but I guarantee you it's not 40% humidity in here. So I am going to show you. So here's the auto setting. You can set auto, um, to run but I don't think you actually have to press the auto button. I never do. What I do is I come to this humidity button and it says percent and say it, here it says 40. Then I press it again, it says 45. So I usually pump this up to 70 or 75. I think 85, let's see, is the highest you can go. Oh no, 80 is the highest you can go. So I usually set it at 70 or 75. Um, actually it's at 75 right now. It'll blink until it's done. And then it says up above that, it's set to that humidity level. The reason I set it at 75 is not because my plants need 75% humidity, although they might like it. I really need 50 for most of my plants to be somewhat comfortable. But the problem is, and this is one of the downfalls of these humidifiers with these auto settings is, I want my whole living room, which is where this lives, to be at 50% humidity. Well, the gauge that's reading what the humidity in the room is, is on this device. So it's reading the immediate air around it, and it's adjusting based off of that. Well. Okay, so maybe around here we've reached 70 or 50% humidity, but I guarantee you the far corner of the room away from this is nowhere near 50, it's at like 28 right now. So in order to kind of trick it into producing more humidity for me to help get the whole room higher, I set it at 70, 75, wherever up there, because if right around this gets that high, then theoretically, further away from it should be closer to that 50%. I say theoretically because let me go grab something and show you something. If you do not have a humidity gauge in your house, I highly recommend buying one. This is an Accurite, is how I think it is pronounced one. I got this at Lowe's, it's like less than $10. Um, and it shows you the current percentage in your house. I don't know if anybody knows, but when I brought this in here, it said 28. This is sitting on my TV stand which is only a few feet away from where this humidifier lives and runs. And it was only registering 28 when I took this humidifier out of the living room to do this video, and it stayed registering 28 right there until I brought it in here. Now that I'm in here and it is right next to this humidifier, look how much it's been going up. Obviously, this proves my point that your humidity level around the humidifier is going to be a lot higher than away from the humidifier. So if you set this at the humidity level you want, you're not gonna get that humidity level in the entire room. It's just not gonna happen because they don't, they would have to make a separate sensor that was like Bluetooth that talked to this that you put on the other side of the room and told it, hey, it may be that humid by you, but it's not that humid by me, keep putting out mist, right? So another case in point, I've had this thing running nonstop the last few days. And once again, when I pulled this off of the TV stand, which is right next to a bunch of plants, it said 28% humidity. This thing's been set at 70 or 75. And that's only a few feet away from where it sits. And it's not getting anywhere near that humidity level. So once again, I told you guys it's gonna be honest in this video about how I felt about humidifiers. I don't really feel like they work. I think if you're gonna get humidifiers, you can see that right around here is working to an extent. We already dropped back down to 34. Um, I'm gonna set this up here and we see how much it goes up while we're talking about it. But I really don't feel like they work that well. This is, claims to go up to 753 square feet that it will cover. And it can't even get a few feet away from it up to even close to what it's set to automatically hit. And it runs non-stop, you guys. I mean, it's puffing and blowing and it just does not turn off. So that's the other thing. It claims that you can use it for 50 hours. I have to refill this once a day. And once again, it's a 1.5 gallon tank. That's a lot of water to be refilling once a day. It takes a while for me to fill this up. Um, so yeah, it's not even remotely getting 50 hours worth of use out of it. But I'm here to tell you right now, you've got a big open floor plan, even if your open area 
is less than that 753 square feet, it's not gonna work with just one. Now, if I put five in that room, maybe, maybe. I say maybe because I haven't tried it. I don't wanna say yes when I haven't tried it, but I'm not gonna pay that much to buy four more of these. I don't even know if I have enough outlets without running extension cords or power plug strips to do it. So that's my two cents on trying to humidify large rooms. I know there are larger humidifiers you can use, but once again, multiple things. One, I don't like them just sitting around junking up a room, making the room look cluttered. I don't like that they all have to be plugged in and then you gotta deal with the cord because inevitably it's never, you're never putting it somewhere where an outlet is convenient, right? Um, so that's really frustrating to me. And then once again, as I said, they can cause damage, which leads me to my next annoying point about this humidifier. So when I bought this humidifier, I just assumed that I could put it pretty much anywhere. I specifically had the intention to put it on a floor because I don't really have anything to put it on like other than that. And I certainly am not gonna put it on my nice coffee table that was highly expensive that's made out of wood because wood and water don't mix. So when I got it and I read the instructions, it specifically states that you should not set it on a floor, period. Do not set it on anything that isn't waterproof. Let me repeat that. Do not set it on anything that isn't waterproof. So think about it. Where would you set it in your house? Right now, this is about the only spot I can think of in my house that I would be able to set that that's waterproof. And I couldn't even set it on the counter behind me because if you go further in the instructions, it says, don't set it near any furniture, period. Don't set it, set it near anything wood. Don't set it within a foot of a wall. Where the hell are you supposed to put this thing? I mean, literally, like, if I wanted to fill the room and I need to put it somewhere and I can't put it on anything, anything, like they literally have like X'd out any possibility of anything I could put this on. Where am I gonna put this? So that is another huge, huge problem I have with this one in particular. And I will tell you, as you saw in my cutaway, it is sitting on the floor because where else am I going to put it? Seriously, you guys, where am I going to put it? So I just put it there, I keep an eye on it. I hope it's not messing up the floor, so far so good. So now that I've ranted about that, yeah, that, yeah. All I, all I have to say is they need to really update their descriptions on their sites um, because another thing, supposedly this is a filterless unit according to their descriptions. It's not, so why don't we get into um, the next part of this. I will say one of the nice things here is that this thing, this cover for this is split all that water coming off of that. So this is split, there's two different openings, one's bigger, one's smaller, and you can angle them wherever you want them. So that's kind of fun. So if I wanna angle more towards one plant or the other, I can, or if I'm trying to kind of split it, if it was in the middle of the room to go to one side of the room and the other, I could split it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn this off. Okay, humidifiers, you gotta clean them at least once a week, especially these big ones. They're gonna get bacteria buildup. Here comes the number one complaint, for this humidifier not just for me but from the reviews online is that it is a pain to clean it is a pain in the rear to clean i hate cleaning it i'm over it i procrastinate about it and i shouldn't because then it makes it harder to clean so you've got to clean every part so this part comes off here this is another thing i don't like about this one but they did release a different version so i will give them that that can be filled from the top but this one has filled from the bottom it has one little tiny handle here. This comes off. You can see here is where you unscrew it to fill it. And then you have this very awkward situation when this is totally full of trying to hold it like this by this tiny handle and get it back onto the base. I did forget to mention this does come in black and white. This one as well, in case I forget to mention it over there. So if you're like, ooh, I don't want a white one in my house that doesn't fit my decor, you can get black. So this is pretty easy to clean. There is a little piece here that you need to keep mindful of to get scale off of and whatnot. This, you just kind of rinse it out. It does say to just rinse parts off and then to descale. In order to descale the way they want you to descale, you actually have to do a mixture of water and vinegar in there and run it. Yeah, I don't have time for that. Um, I have never done that. I clean it once a week and I just use some vinegar on a little cotton pad and sometimes I use a Q-tip to use the vinegar to get any kind of scale buildup off. But this thing is just a lot of parts to clean you guys and it's a big pain in the butt. Um, I did just clean this the other day, which really I should have just left it dirty so you could see what it looked like. 
Um, so this is one piece here, and you can see you've got to get all in here. You got to get all down in there. And in here, where you can't see under this piece, is where I see all of the, if anybody's ever worked in the restaurant industry and you've had to clean a Coke machine, and you see all that slimy pink buildup that gets on there, if you don't clean it often enough, which by the way, don't drink from the Coke machine, if you see any of that, that is like the start of salmonella, that gets down under here. And it's a pain in the butt to get to, which is why this piece comes off, but not very easily. You have to pull the sides apart, and every time I do it, I'm afraid I'm gonna break it, so I'm not gonna take it out. But you pull the sides apart, this piece comes out so that you can get further down in there to clean it. It's just kind of a pain. The bigger pain is this part. So then you have to dump the water out of the base and you've got to clean the base. Well, here's my number one complaint about this. This cord is permanently attached and the manual has tons of warnings about do not get this wet, but you got to take this to your sink and dump the water out of it and clean it out with fresh water and vinegar and whatever else, but don't get this wet. Design flaw. So you will notice there will be a little thing here that says pour water this way because you also cannot get any water in this thing. Big no-no to get water in this thing. So while you're cleaning it, you've also got to be super careful not to do that. And then there's all these tiny little crevices. Let me dump the water real quick, you guys, before I make a mess. Yeah, cords, they're fun. So you can see all those little crevices in there that you got to get clean. And remember how this apparently is filterless? It's a filter. It's a filter. And the manual says it's easy to order replacements for it. So it's not filterless. They lie. So as you can see, a lot of parts here, you've got to get all of this washed and cleaned up. Then you got to get it all put together. And trust me, you're going to make a wet mess of wherever you're doing this. So yeah, I mean, this is kind of like my biggest complaint. Like I said, everybody else online's biggest complaint was how difficult this thing is to clean. And once again, I think it's a pain in the ass once this is all the way full to put it back together, but you could buy the top loading one. I'm not sure that one has all the same features as this one though. You just put this back on, plug it back in and you're good to go. That is basically all I have to say about that one. I know I kind of intermingled my pros and cons, but I kind of wanted to do this as like a fluid, kind of just talk about my experiences with it. Yeah, so not really a fan of this one, really not. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this one out of the way. I feel like this video is getting crazy long, but I really just wanted to cover all of these with you guys today. So hopefully you're still sticking around. I will try to timestamp this one so you can hit each humidifier where you want to. So this is the Geniani or Geniani. I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced. Let me get the logo up there so you can read it. Okay, it's backwards, sorry. G-E-N-I-A-N-I. -E I like to think maybe it's Geniani because it's like, you know, genie in the bottle, the mist is coming out, I don't know. The model is the Huron, H-U-R-O-N, and it is a top fill mister uh, humidifier with only cool mist. So as I mentioned, this does come in white and black. Uh, this one was highly recommended by plant people, and I hadn't see it on, seen it on any of the other lists, but all the reviews like on Amazon, like a lot of them were from plant people and they were saying they love it. So I went ahead and decided to get it. And there are a lot of things I like about this one way more than the other one. It does not say that you can't set it on the floor. It does recommend not setting it on carpet, I believe. And it does say try to make sure it's on a waterproof surface, but I have it sitting on the floor in my dining room. It hasn't made that big of a mess. It is giving me the white dust everywhere. I mean, I've just decided that's just what's gonna happen with humidifiers. I do use the filtered water from my fridge for this one. It is a top fill. And one of the things I like about this is you can top fill it with the lid on. So let me, ooh, just only taking it apart there. Let me get up here. So you see this hole here goes into, directly into the water tank. So you can actually pour water through here, which is super nice. I can just fill up my watering cans with my filter water from my fridge, go in the dining room, fill it through there, and we're good to go. The mist does come out of here. This is a non-directional. I can't change the direction of this like I could on the other ones. So that's one thing that's different. Um, and a little bit of a downside. The nice thing about this one um, is that it is actually filterless. And it's, so it's basically what you call an ultrasonic one. Now I've heard a lot of people talk about not liking the ultrasonic ones. Apparently it's stuck with the sound that it makes. I just think it's really quiet. It doesn't make any kind of sounds that bother me at all. There's a slight hum, but you know, the other one's got a slight hum. Electronic items typically have a slight hum, you know? but I don't think it's anything really annoying. I do also like that you can't see all the way into the tank with the water level. It's just got this nice clean exterior that looks beautiful in a room. 
Uh, it is approximately nine by six by 12, so it's thinner this way, as you can see. So this is kind of nice because it can slide in behind something, you hide it with your plants, whatever. Um, but it does still have this little indicator here that you can see into the tank so you can see what level the water is at. As you can see, this is much more simple. There is one button here and it's kind of like the little tabletop ones. How many times you press this is what you get. This does have the auto off feature when the water runs out and it does have an auto setting. So I turn this on, it's automatically an auto setting. But as you can see, I can't set the humidity level. So it claims that it will, if you set the auto setting, it will keep it between 50 and 60%, or sorry, 40 and 60% humidity, which is fine for me. And I will say it does tend to kick on around that 40% mark when it, my meter tells me that we're getting to that range, it typically kicks on. This time of year right now, with the humidity being like 30 or less in here, it runs nonstop. So once again, this has to get refilled at least once a day. It is a slightly smaller tank. So the other one was 1.58 gallons. This one is 1.05 gallons. So it's not that much, 0.5-ish gallons. Um, but this one is way easier to clean, you guys. Oh my God, so much easier to clean. So I already took the lid off. You can see this needs to get clean. The hardest part to clean in here is just to get up in there. It's kind of slimy right now because I haven't cleaned this one since I got back from my vacation. I have seen zero scale buildup on this one. You feel it right now. Yeah, I, there's a lot of that sliminess, um, but I have not had to scrub any scale off of this one in the entire time that I've had it. I've, I got it maybe two weeks after the other one, and every time I clean that one, there's always some hard scale buildup that I have to get off of it. So that's nice. And then if you see in here, so here's the tank there's hardly anything like little crevices to get around or anything. You just get in there and you clean it so much faster, so much easier. Um, you are gonna wanna clean under here. This is that, we saw this piece was um, on the underside of that tank as well, same thing. This is another piece that, once again, this is set up to where you can take it off if you need to to clean it, but I've never had to, it's pretty clean. Same thing here. This piece will come off if you need to, but my brushes, ooh, making a mess. My brushes all get up in there fine. And actually let me dump the rest of this water because I haven't cleaned this one in a hot minute, AKA a week. So you may be able to see the, and it's more of an orange tint in this one for some reason than pink. But can you see There's just some orange buildup of stuff in there? That is that bacteria buildup that I'm talking about that you need to clear off, but it's easy to get to. There's not really tiny crevices or anything in there to create a problem. And one of the things I absolutely love about this one is, remember how we had to dump the water out of that one? It says not to get the cord wet. Oh, where's the cord? No, it's not rechargeable, I wish, but the cord is removable. It plugs in here, but when you need to clean it, you can take it off. You don't have to worry about getting it wet. I'm gonna dump the water out real quick. There's also no instructions that say you can't dump the water this way or that, or avoid getting water in a piece that's in here where you're trying to clean. And as you can see, it is there is no filter. This is a little paddle thing that adjusts, I think, to help it know when the water is low or when it needs to shut off. This is part of what actually creates the mist. And look, still, there's no like tiny crevices or anything. It's really, really easy to clean, you guys. This is where you put the essential oils if you want to on this one. Um, and it just, it works really, really well, you guys. As far as actually producing this on an auto schedule, um, it puts out a pretty big mist stream. I really should have plugged it in to show you. It's, it's about like the level two one, level two mist setting, setting on that one. However, once again, it does not actually humidify the whole room to the level that it claims. Still my complaint with all the humidifiers. Yeah, it's not gonna get the, I think this one is 220 square feet. I have it in a room that's like 140 square feet and yeah, never gets there, never gets there. I have another humidity gauge in there. It just doesn't happen. So once again, if you're gonna use humidifiers, your best bet is to have them right next to your plants. It's not gonna cover your entire room. So if your plants sprout out everywhere, you would need a humidifier for every area there is a plant. That's about it, you guys. I don't wanna keep just rambling on. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Oh, I did wanna say this one is supposed to have an 18 plus hour runtime before you have to fill it. But once again, I have to fill it 
every few days or so. Yeah, I once again, I feel like I'm rambling on. So let's just wrap this video up. I hope this has been informative for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions or anything, put them in the comments. You can follow me on at Aloha Plant Life on Instagram or Aloha Plant Life on Facebook. You can contact me there as well. And if you have not yet hit that subscribe button or that like button, please do so. It helps me to get more views and grow my audience and YouTube channel here. And once again, I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and aloha.